an IEM based on a Chinese god, I can safely say the expectation is as high as the heavens. Hello and thank you for clicking on this video where I'll be sharing my experience on the Tangzu Nerja, which is a 6BA1 ESD driver coming in at 399 US dollars. This is currently the IAM below their flagship, which is the Swan Wu Gate. And so far I'm still waiting for Tangzu to bring in the magic like they did with their planar set, so I'm very curious to hear what they did with the Nerja. But before we begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Melbourne Chi Fi Audio for sending this unit for testing and allowing me to share my experience. However, However, this unit will be sent back after and all thoughts and opinions are still my own and are not influenced by any parties. If you've been enjoying what I've been putting out, I hope you consider helping me reach my goal of 3000 subscribers by hitting that like and subscribe button. I'd appreciate it a lot. Now, let's talk unboxing because Tangzu is really good at giving you an unboxing experience. However, as you saw through my unboxing, the artwork at the front of the box is fantastic. But the box itself is really huge. A little too huge since the contents don't match the size of the box. I'd rather this artwork be in like an artwork card or something so I can collect all the cool artwork that's been promoted by Tangzu and just have a smaller but much more condensed packaging. So opening the box, you'll be greeted by the IMs themselves and Tangzu's case. Moving the top layer of the foam reveals two sets of Tangzu's own Tang San Chai ear tips. One set of the normal ones and another set with a white bore design. Let's talk about the case because Tangzu's case is big but in a good way because any IM that I want any protection for, I would keep it in Tangzu's case. It's got a bit of like a four leather feel to it with Tangzu's logo on it, sewing seams on the sides with a gold zipper. Inside there's another layer to protect your IAM but I typically remove this layer but it's up to your preference. It's also a lot more sharper in these edges compared to the original. Just bringing in the original case for comparison. In terms of size it's about the same, just the newer one is more of a box shape whereas the original has more curves on the corners. All in all, love the case. The cable that it comes with is also really nice. It's got this gunmetal grey scheme to the colour, triple weave design going into two leading to the ear hooks. It's balancing between having the right stiffness but not being too heavy light enough without feeling too flimsy, dark grey chrome finish on the terminations and chin straps and it comes with interchangeable terminations with a 4.4mm and 3.5mm option. One of the nicer looking stock cables I've seen in a while. The design of the IMs themselves are, for me personally, just sexy gorgeous. The black resin body with the shiny red flakes, sort of reminiscing of blood rain or red fire in the night with their logos in gold on either face plates. It's just one of those IAMs where the design stands out in a really cool way and if you like red and black colour schemes, this IAM's design is right up your alley. Great colour choices used and in terms of appearance of this IAM as an overall package, from the IAMs to the designs of the cable, they nailed it for the Nerja and is a great representation of the god in feature. In terms of fit and comfort, it has a lot of curves and contours on the IAMs and it just sits in my ears no problem. No pain or unwanted pressures anywhere around my ears so it's something I can wear for hours no problem. While it's great to have a cool looking IAM, what matters most is the sound so let's explore. I think the intention of the Nerd Jar is to give you a smooth listening experience that has a bit of body to the vocals yet giving you the whole presentation to you without any fatigue. The vocals are positioned in the same plane as the background music so you're getting the all-in-one kind of presentation. You can hear what's happening in the background but they are sharing the spotlight with the singer but Tangzu is utilizing all those drivers to ensure they don't overwhelm each other. Despite having an EST driver in this setup, it's bringing the treble but never in a way where it's fatiguing, at least to my ears. I would say it's a relatively smooth listening experience, however there is something happening in the treble extension where either they've reduced it or just how it's being tuned, but trumpets are missing that openness to their note weight and they sound pushed back and a little muted. It's like a mute trumpet is being played rather than having that sharpness and clear sound to the notes. But it also helps in a way where you can turn the volume up for the Nerja without fear of getting pierced by the sharpness. 
if there is one thing that for me personally felt like the Najjar was lacking, it would be in the lower regions. That whole BA base term applies to this IAM in a way where it's just falling flat on its base presentation. You're hearing the base, but you're not necessarily feeling it. It's clean, but it's not as full bodied or textured. And there's not a lot coming in from the deep end as well to provide that sense of engagement that I typically like in my sound. It's just missing that punch and slam. And I believe that's never been the intention of this IEM. However, there is still a tilt to give vocals a bit of fullness instead of going towards the lean and clean kind of mid range. In terms of technicalities, I think this is where it's good for its price, but it's not blowing anyone's socks off. It's just ticking all the boxes where it's not too recessed or too forward. There's enough separation in the sounds to bring out the details, but the micro details while audible requires a bit of focus to hear their presence as they don't have that distinctiveness but it's all there within the sound stage which lends itself to giving you that kind of all-in-one presentation but not overwhelming you as mentioned earlier. So I realized I don't have a lot of IEMs to compare in the $400 price category so I'll compare with IEMs that are at least close with this IEM in terms of price. So let's start with one of my recent IEM that I've talked about the Dunu Giz Audio Da Vinci. This IEM is $100 cheaper but in terms of accessories and how the IEMs look they are essentially neck to neck. Both IAMs look gorgeous. Both have really great accessories provided in the package. So where is different to the Najah is in its sound where the Da Vinci has a punchier, more textured bass presentation and it sounds warmer, but the Najah brings in the details, but for $100 cheaper, the Da Vinci is not too far behind. And the Da Vinci still brings details in its performance, but I'm just saying with how Najah is tuned, it's able to bring out more from the background music into focus. However, the Da Vinci puts the singer more into focus whereas, as mentioned earlier, the Najah brings the background music to be in the same plane with the singer. At the end of the day, they both present a smooth listening experience, so it's a toss-up on which you'd expect more from your sound that becomes the deciding factor. And of course, the $100 difference. So how would a hybrid IAM consisting of BA and an EST fare against a planar like the Lecture S15? As mentioned in my comparisons with other IAMs, the Lecture S15 is a warm, smooth sounding IAM with good accessories, but I'd actually give the edge to the Tangzu Neja in terms of overall presentation. It also has a wider sense of sound stage compared to the S15, and it places the position of sounds better within the sound stage. And the additional $70 does feel like you're getting a slight upgrade from the Lecture S15 in terms of looks, fit and comfort, accessories, and also sound presentation. Another IM that I used to own that I can remember having a somewhat similar experience would be the Moondrop Variations. That IM has really good technicalities for its price, but its sub bass was one of its best attributes, but it was still lacking mid bass and it cost $100 more than the Tangzu Neja. So the Tangzu Neja would be the easier pick if you're looking for that detailed delivery, but still having that body and warmth to the vocals and the Neja package has way better accessories and it's $100 cheaper, but it doesn't have the same engagement as the Moondrop variation, at least in the sub bass department. So in summary, I think this IAM is coming in at a time where there's a lot of competition in terms of price to performance. And I'm guessing this IAM is trying to bring you a smooth, warm yet detailed presentation within that $400 category, an all-in-one presentation without fatigue. If what I just described is the kind of presentation you're looking for, Tang Zhu achieves in delivering that kind of presentation with the Neja, but I'm still missing a little bit of that bass and I feel for my personal preference, just giving it maybe one additional DD and bumping the bass up a little bit, maybe push the vocals a touch more forward and that would have brought that additional fire that would have matched how Neja is depicted from its artwork. But that's just my take on this and I'm curious to know your thoughts. Have you heard of the Tang Zhu Neja and what are your experiences? like. Comment below and let me know and with that all said, thank you to Melbourne Chai Fire Audio once again for this opportunity. If you're in Australia and would like to pick either the Tang Zhu Neja or any other Chai Fire IEMs, do check out the link in the description. Once again, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see all of you in the next video.